Okay, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Camels Vlogcast. I'm your host, Justin Rich, and I may not bring my guest on, um, Bev Latham of Dazzling Accessories. Um, I bring her on. Good evening, everybody. All right, welcome. Hi, how, how are, are you? you I'm doing well. So um, introduce yourself, your business, and a little about yourself. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Velvet Lattimore, and I'm the owner of Dazzling Accessories. Um, my boutique is a accessories boutique where I showcase many different accessories by um, artists of color. And everything is handmade by local designers and mostly all made within here of the United States. Okay. So what inspired you to start your business? Like, what was that turning point for you to become an entrepreneur and start your business? Well, um, I left the corporate world. I worked in the fashion industry as a production coordinator for a couple of years. And I kept having issues with jobs, like keeping a job, either mm. the, the job will go out of business or like I would just get randomly fired mm. or like yeah. so stuff like that kept happening. And, um, uh, so I was for, uh, fortunate enough to receive a really good <clears throat> package at one of the companies I was working at. And um, after being laid off, they gave me a compensation package and mm. I got unemployment. So I took that money instead of looking for another job, but to literally mm. like <clears throat> just start my own thing. And I started mm. my own business. Wow. So has it been so far since you started? Like what's been the feedback from like customers and other clients? How's it been so far? It's been pretty good. Like, I mean, I started the business in 2007, okay. but I was an actual brick and mortar. So I had um, a store, a physical storefront for mm. eight years in Brooklyn. And um, last year, I actually transitioned to online only because the mm. rent is going up and up and up. So this is my first kind of year really working hard at being online. And, and it's been going good. I was a little nervous at first because mm -hmm. I'm used to the one-on-one -on -one contact that you get from people yeah. coming into the store. So it was a challenge for me being online. And and so it's been good. It's, it's mm. been really, really good being um, selling online. So um, tell us a little about when you first became entrepreneur to like now, what were your first thoughts when you first became entrepreneur? Was it like you were like scared? Are you like excited? Or how'd you feel? I was super nervous. Mm. Like in the beginning, I was very into it um, and things were really flowing. But um, again, as I was telling you, Justin, I was getting unemployment. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of living off my savings and unemployment. I was able to pay rent and stuff like that. But as that started winding down, that's when I got really scared because, you know, it gets really real when you don't have like a cushion. Mm -hmm. And there were times where I, I was so nervous. I couldn't I was just like not sure if it was going to continue um, to keep growing. And there were times where it was really rough um, and I couldn't get on a train and all kind of stuff. Mm. But um, so in it, the struggle is real. Uh, so I'm not going to lie to you about yeah, that. But of course, of course. I persevered through it. Yeah. So what makes you unique and makes you different from the other businesses like yours? I think it, um, well, now, especially more than ever. But back then when I started, I was like the only one really showcasing black and brown designers. Mm. So everything in the store was local local stuff. So everybody in the neighborhood or like within Brooklyn and who were in New York City um, were featured in my shop. And I provided a platform for artists that probably normally could not get into a store because you know mm -hmm. how hard it is to get into a store as a designer. It's equally harder when you are a person of color. So, you know, I was really already on that black black wave before mm -hmm. now like now people are really jumping on it due to all that's going on in the world today but i back in 2007 it was just sort of like you know um something a little new and unique and that's what made my shop very very unique because when mm -hmm. people would come in it would people would say oh this is really nice and there was a connection between the product and the designer um where you could see the craftsmanship and the hard work that the designer puts into the accessory mm -hmm. Okay, so, so what are some of the um like products and accessories you're talking about? Like, what are you guys selling in your store? I or sell um, handbags, jewelry. Um, like, I'm wearing a pair of earrings now that I, I resell by a designer. She's from St. Croix. Um, and some of the rings I have on. Um, and I sell accessories only, mainly accessories. So I don't sell, like, clothes or apparel mm -hmm. or anything like that. I think the most... 
non-accessory that I sell is like t-shirts. But even that, I'm not saturated with t-shirts. It's mostly accessories like bracelets, belts, mm -hmm. wallets, handbags, and, and jewelry. Mm -hmm. um, that's mostly primarily what I sell. So when people come to your store, like who's your audience mostly for like your target audience? It's mostly women. Women, okay. women love to mm -hmm. shop. Mm -hmm. But it's rare I'll get like I do get men in there every mm -hmm. once in a while that they're looking for something for their lady or their mom or aunt and sister. So I do get men that actually shop in the store. But um it's mostly women. I will mm. I'll say it's yeah. eighty percent <laughs> okay. of the business is women. So when they come in your store, like they see you online, do they ask for like matching to match them with the clothes? They just want something to, like match the clothes, they want something like for like certain parties or certain going out or like how's that work? That's right, Justin. Um, mostly people who come in, they usually, and that's what I had to learn. Like I, um, with retail, a lot of the times people come into the store because they actually have in their mind um, something that they uh, need for a particular mm -hmm. event, like for um, maybe an an event for a church or an event, a party. Maybe mm -hmm. going out to a comedy show or to a concert. So sometimes people will come in and they know. Like some women are very specific, like I'm going to a bridal party or um, a wedding and I need this and my dress looks like that. Um, and sometimes they'll bring the, the outfits in and I'm able to match it up or style it with what they're telling me. So a lot of the times the people that do come in, uh, they do come in with something um, specific in mind. But I do get people who just are kind of like walking around and they see the shop and then they'll mm. just come in and it just stumble in and then they end up buying because they see something that's cool or unique. And um, so I've been pretty lucky because I do mm. get people pass her by and they just didn't know they were in the mood to mm. buy. Like, yeah. and, <laughs> and they end up buying it. Yeah, so <laughs> that's pretty dope. Like, that's pretty dope. So talk yeah. a little about um, the challenges you face like on a daily basis or like from like, I know you switched from like brick and mortar to like online. So what are some of the challenges you face? Oh man, the challenge is online. Like I told mm. you, it's, it's a little easier when you have a store, people come in, but the more and the more you see now, um, when I first transitioned completely, I missed that uh, interaction with humans coming in and, and seeing things with their eyes and saying, oh, you know, this is really great, let me buy it. Now I have to figure out social media, what that looks like, how to sell online, how to make your pictures look sellable. And in the beginning, I was really horrible because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I had like an Instagram page that was also my personal page because I had an Instagram page, but I didn't have like a, a business page. And mm -hmm. I, I, I took a class and that's what really opened my eyes to say, okay, Instagram is real. Social media is real. It's not just for games. So I had to learn how to make pictures more, um, um, like poppy, more like, sellable, like, mm, right? Pop, mm, yeah, mm. and then I have to separate my pages to make okay. This is for my personal life where I have cocktails with my friends, or I'm going to the movies, mm. and then the dazzling accessories is a separate page where I'm selling my products and I'm not doing social activities. You know, mm. um, things that you would normally do on yeah. the so then with, like show. customers too, because you're like you don't want to like show them like you want to show the person personable, but you don't want to be like too personable. Where they're like, oh, what's this person like? Maybe a drinker. They don't mean like what's what type right. of this person? You know, so exactly, yeah, exactly that. And that was a challenge because I I had no idea because I had a store for so long, like a, a physical store, mm. that I didn't know that these are the you know th there was an etiquette for posting pictures. Mm. And um, so now more than ever, because of the pandemic, it's allowed me to really, you know, um, get more customers because people are home and they don't actually mm -hmm. have no choice but to go into uh, the online space and shop. Mm. So speaking of the pandemic, how has it affected your creativity and like your business? Have you been like more like researching, more like finding how to grow your business online? How have you been working like the pandemic and all that too? Like all the time you have like being home? Well, what I've been doing like, like um, is really going in and learning on YouTube, how to take more, um, how to sell better online mm -hmm. and perfect my online sales. Um, I've reaching out to a lot of like uh, groups that I belong to mm. on LinkedIn and on Facebook, which is how I met yeah. you. 
And um, just reaching out to people with content, um, um, I had to learn that people like yourself and other bloggers and bloggers, those are the people who perform or who provide a platform for me. Mm -hmm. So if I reach out to other like journalists and, and people who are media driven, and then they can talk about my business. Mm. It's sort of like a new wave of um, word of mouth. Yeah. So the pandemic has allowed me to really take my time and just go online and find other content people to help partner with me to help m get mm -hmm. the word out about my boutique. So okay. the pandemic has been, um, I've, I've, I've been able to really like tap into my creative side and think out the box of, okay, what can I do next mm. to grab people's attention? Yeah, it's great. It's like a time to really grow. So how can how can somebody support your business like in this, this time? How can somebody like support your business like um, buying stuff or looking at looking at your products? How can somebody support you? Well, they can definitely come to my website at vdazzlingaccessories.com. and um, you know I have things for everyone. I have earrings that are ten bucks all the way up to like you know stuff that's a hundred dollars. So my price range is very affordable. So if someone wants to just make a purchase, that's the best donation that they can ever mm -hmm. give. Um, I'm not opposed to not just taking um, gifts. So if someone mm -hmm. wants to donate, they can cash at me at Velvet Lattimore, uh, dollar sign Velvet Lattimore. Um, mm -hmm. But for the most part, support goes a long way by sales. So if you, you know, want to just buy something for like your aunt or your girlfriend or just a friend, I have things for men too. Um, that's the biggest support that I could, I would just be so grateful and, and it would be a blessing if someone just felt the need to just, mm -hmm. okay, let me just buy this pair of earrings. I don't need earrings. Maybe I can yeah. give it to somebody at Christmas or do early Christmas yeah, we shopping. Definitely, definitely support black businesses, especially, you know, especially nowadays. So thank you. Thank you. Justin. So what are, what are some of your like present goals now? Oh, really tackling this online wave mm -hmm. like really i i my goal is to have consistent foot traffic to my website mm -hmm. and um i've received a big amount of followers and so i'm really lucky because people are following me mm -hmm. but um my goal is to turn those followers into sales and mm -hmm. um have a better conversion rate with my my website mm -hmm. so that's really i want people to not just love me online and and follow me on instagram but i want it to then turn into you clicking mm -hmm. on the pictures and actually buying it and stuff yeah, that's so the hard part that's, but a that's goal. E easy too but yeah yeah do you have any other yeah. goals also, you wanted to work on um i would i would really like to connect more with more designers mm -hmm. um i want to be able to keep this platform going so i want to grow right now i presently have about 10 designers that I work mm -hmm. with, but I would love to have, you know, a hundred designers. Mm -hmm. I would love my website to grow like an Amazon or like um, an Etsy where it's a complete marketplace where it is nothing but um, black and brown designers that are able mm -hmm. to be featured and showcased. Uh, it's really important to support local artists who otherwise would not have a, a platform or voice. And so um, my goal is to be able to get more people to find me online and have more designers get support and get sales through my website. So how do you um use your use your use your platform to like brand to promote yourself? Like how do you use social media? How do you use it like on a daily basis? Well I post consistently um and I'm learning that there's like a whole metrics behind it. So just really like trying to not just post random stuff mm -hmm. just because you you need you posting, but really provide good content where that it con connects with the people that are actually following me, where they feel engaged. So I don't want to just post, you know, a pair of earrings for sale or buy these earrings. I want to be able to make my posts um, more personable mm -hmm. so that you feel like a sense of who I am and not just like, um, these other big brands like a Macy's or whatever, where they're just literally posting um, earrings and mm. necklaces and jewelry um, and there's no personality. So mm. I think you can get to know me through my Instagram um, and know my personality, but um, that's something I really want people. That's why I work at really mm. making the best post. And I think before I post so that it's something that reflects me so that you can feel like you, oh yeah, I know her. She's so cool or whatever. 
through my posts. Mm -hmm. So I know you collaborated with like designers and all that too, but have you collaborated with other businesses and how do you find those businesses? And um, I have created, um, you mean like collaborations with like yeah, big like, brands or just businesses? No, no, just like small businesses. Oh, I've, co I've collaborated with other retail boutiques that don't really sell what I sell. So um, I've collaborated with like retail stores that sell small businesses, basically. Um, I have a friend that I collaborated and she's based in Harlem and she sells women's clothing, dresses. And um, I've been able to match my accessories with the clothes that she has. So I did a couple events last summer at the Brownstone. It's called the Brownstone in Harlem. And I was able to showcase some of my jewelry alongside with her clothes, her um, garments. Mm. And so um, I want to also reach out to more bigger organizations and um, do that. So that's another thing that I've been able to do during the pandemic is like send out emails to mm -hmm. other colleagues to see if they would be interested in collaborating. I'm open to it. So if you mm -hmm. know anybody, that's of course, I'll that's send them your way. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> Collaboration is good. Of it really course. is. It's, mm -hmm. it's what helps our businesses to grow. So final two questions. Um, how do we how do we protect like black businesses and small businesses during this time too and support each other? Um, well, if we support each other, it's a the protection is there by mm. us being able to so if I reshare your content, um, you know, if I reshare countless vlogcasts and then my other sisters and brothers reshare countless vlogcasts and he's doing mm. a podcast episode nine or whatever is airing on Wednesday, we need to start resharing our information. Mm -hmm. um, and not just for you resharing it, um, but you tasking other people to reshare it too. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, other people will be able to find out who Justin is and what your podcast is about. And the same thing with me. I think a lot of times people drop the ball because they just sort of say, oh, Velvet has a great shop, that's it. Mm. But they won't go and reshare and tell others. Or when I ha post a picture on Facebook, it takes like two minutes to reshare somebody's business. And mm -hmm. I think that that's the only way that Black businesses will grow. And that's the only way we'll keep the integrity um, is by saying, oh, here's a great Black business, follow them. I think we also need more directories. Mm. I think the more directories that we have that show where we can buy other black products will help strengthen black businesses as well. So I know that there are a couple like we buy black and um, mm -hmm. a couple of, you know, you've seen them. I think once we start um, having those, people won't really have an excuse to say, oh, I don't know where there's a black owned yeah. cleaners or I don't know where there's a black owned shoemaker mm -hmm. or a black. I think a lot of the times people, sometimes want to support and buy black, but they don't know where to find mm. black businesses or they're not sure if it's a black business. Um, I was talking to a friend the other day and I, I don't know how this would happen, but I, I wish when I had a store that mm. I could put in the window, you know how like the LGBTQ community, they can put a rainbow flag in the window yeah. that you know that it's supported by mm -hmm. um, the queer community. If we could do that for black businesses by putting like the red, black, and green flag in mm, a window sure. or putting a sign, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Support, like this is a black owned business. If you can put something like the same way restaurants put like an A rating mm -hmm. or whatever, like if you can do that, why can't we put like just a little flag in a window or just this is black owned? That way when you walk by the restaurant, you know that it's a black owned business yeah. and that you're supporting and putting dollars into a black owned business. I've never seen it. I mean, I've seen yeah. it in some, but you're right. Have you seen yeah, not, that? I not enough. I don't think I've ever seen that. I think that that and like a, um, like a black Yelp too, like something like with like ratings right. to help people right. like get their ratings up and all that too, like reviews and all that too. I know a lot, a lot of people do like uh, on the Facebook groups, they do like um, review recommendations, but like, you know, it's like, so it's Facebook. So everything is just like condensed and there you see like a lot of posts in a minute. So you may miss something. So. Right. So that's, not, that's, a, that's it. Mm. That's exactly what I would. I think mm. it needs to happen. Exactly yeah, what you said. It would be so helpful. I just because I've had friends say to me that they say, um, "Oh, I want to support black." I've had white friends actually say mm. this to me, but I don't know where. I don't know where to find them. I, how do I know that it's a black-owned business? Mm -hmm. 
some, you know, if you go to my um, Instagram page, I made sure to put it in my bio mm. that I'm a woman of color supporting people of color. But someone pointed out to me that like not everybody knows what the acronym, like the hashtag POC means. Mm. So I had to like really spell it out. But, you know, um, I put it in my bio mm. that, you know, so maybe people will know from there. But I think more businesses that are black owned, if they can do that, it would be very helpful. Yeah, so it's like it's like a next step to people like growing their businesses now at home. So we have like Facebook now. We have all these collaborations going on. So I think that's that next step. We put everything together and like grow, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure, it would be dope. Yeah. So like finally, I like to end with like a positive message from you, like to, like the people watching and like potential customers. Anything you want to say to the people out there? Um. If you are an entrepreneur, I would say, and I say, I say this all the time um, to my, um, the people who are starting out, like mm -hmm. if this is your first business, definitely don't give up. I know that it's a struggle. So there are times where, like I said, that I, I've experienced where I'm just like, dad, I can't even freaking get on the train, you know, mm -hmm. or I'll stand at the turnstile and hope somebody yeah. swipes me. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um you know, I definitely think that the struggle was worth it. Never, ever give up. If this is something you're passionate about, uh, you will definitely see the rewards. Don't just start a business just to start a business, but find a business that it's something that you're passionate about. And definitely God will provide you with the resources and the money will follow. In the beginning, it might seem really rough, but if this is something you really love or you're passionate about, I guarantee, I know it sounds sappy and very Disney and very Oprah-ish, but it is true facts. Like I've been doing this thing since 2007 and it took at least five to six years for people to really, like for me to start mm -hmm. seeing crazy money start happening and that I was able to afford like, you know, to be able to eat out and not yeah, be and independent. Not work, not working on the five, you know, so yeah. Yeah, I am a full-time entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I do not work for anybody. But it, it's it's a definite hustle. Don't be opposed to getting these little side gigs because that's what I did. Like a gig here and there or, you know, a temp assignment here and there. Don't be afraid to roll your sleeves up because I think sometimes people are like, oh, I'm above that. I would never, mm -hmm. you know, do Postmates or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Hey, I did it. And it helped to put money in my pocket mm -hmm. to just go through and pay for advertising or marketing or pay for my website. Like because you know, you're not going to get an investor. Shark Tank doesn't really happen in real life yeah, to people. No. Mm -hmm. So, no, right? So <laughs> don't give up it. Yeah, and I think I talk to like entrepreneurs all the time, Justin, and they'll be like, oh, well, you know, maybe I'm going to get an investor. Newsflash, that doesn't happen. Thank, it doesn't really even Thank you for speaking for you. the truth, though. Thank you for speaking the truth, though. So you need doesn't to hear happen. the truth. Yeah. <laughs> don't happen. Mm -mm. Not even with some white businesses. So mm -hmm. don't get it twisted. It's not even a race thing. These, these yeah. fairy godmother investment people do not drop out of the sky. Out of the sky. Mm -hmm. So you need to grind. Like you need to not be afraid to take a little part time mm -hmm. situation or a little BS gig to put money in your pockets so that you're hungry. You know, you're not hungry. But um, I, yeah, don't give up. If this is something you really want to do, do not do not give up just like really keep plugging at it and i'm serious opportunity will come your way oh and don't be afraid to work with people too like mm. sometimes entrepreneurs get really stuck in their heads and they're like oh well i'm not gonna work with justin like yeah. see. Mm. don't don't do that because you don't know what that person's platform could provide for you you know mm, of course so finally drop your social media with instagram facebook and then your website Okay, it's very easy. Be Dazzling Accessories, which is V E D A Z Z L I N G. Accessories with an A, A C C E S S O R I E S dot com. Or Facebook, Be Dazzling Accessories. Twitter, Just Be Dazzling. Instagram, Be Dazzling. Um, I'm on uh, Tumblr as Be Dazzling Accessories. So I'm pretty much, you can Google me now. Hey, I'm Googleable now, oh, so you congratulations. can put me in. Congratulations. <laughs> I Google myself a lot, and I'm like, what? <laughs> so yeah, I have a, a YouTube channel, and it's Bedazzling Accessories. 
So yeah, you could just Google me and put in V-Dazzling Accessories and all my information will come up. But I'm on all platforms as V-Dazzling or V-Dazzling Accessories. That's great. So thank you for coming on. And thank you guys support Velvet and V-Dazzling Accessories, guys. Go out, support, like, comment, buy, 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 support, though. You know. Thank you, Justin, for providing this space for me. Thank you very much. You. I appreciate you. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.